In Luke Chimilenko's Ascend Online novels, a group of friends enters the massive virtual reality of Ascend Online, where they must overcome the many challenges that threaten their village of Alford. The Ascend Online novels are about people discovering who they truly are in this virtual world and becoming the heroes the world needs them to be. I'm Keith Baker, designer of the Dungeons & Dragons setting of Eberron and co-founder of Together Studios. To celebrate the release of the fourth book in the Ascend Online series, Glory to the Brave, Jen and I teamed up with Podium Audio to create a micro game that helps you and your friends tell your own stories in the world of Ascend Online. You can get this PDF when you download Glory to the Brave at audible.com. I've gathered a few friends to play with me today, so let's take a moment to meet them. Becca? Oh, I should. Hello, Keith. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Damien? Hello, everyone. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate being here. Excellent. Uh, so, to play this game, you need a deck of playing cards. I have a cool deck of Ascend Online playing cards, but they are, in fact, normal cards, and you can use any deck of playing cards that you choose. Uh, we draw cards from our decks to determine random elements of the story using the tables that are included in the PDF. The first step in our story is to create our characters. And really, we're creating two characters because we are playing people in the real world who are playing Ascend Online. The PDF includes a character creation table. So let's look at that now, and I'll draw my first card. So I am playing a... We look to the king, an ogre or half giant. We'll keep that out and think about that. Who is a diamonds, a priest. And I am also spades, charismatic, of course. And also with spades, an aspiring actor. So let's take a moment and think about that. Uh, I'll start with I'm aspiring actor. So, you know, I'm, I'm coming in here and, and let's face it, Ascend Online, you can stream your content. Uh, it can be very popular. So I definitely think I am here because I'm hoping this is going to be my big break. People are going to see me. And given that, I think I'm going with the ogre. You know, half giant's a little like, hey, where's, where's ogre? You got some Shrek 7 vibes going. It'll be and, and a charismatic ogre. That seems like, oh, it's got some depth. You know, people will notice that. Uh, so I'm playing a charismatic ogre who is a priest, and I'm going to say I'm a priest of Mythos, the god of law, because I'm here to lay down the law. And I'm going to name my character Grogar Stonebane. And I don't know what Stonebane means, if he eats rocks, if he <laughs> throws rocks, but that's his He is name. hated by rocks. Yeah, Grogar Pro Stonebane. Golem problems. <laughs> Becca, let's find out who you're playing. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm so excited. Here's my deck of cards. It's just the classic bicycle. It's not as exciting. Okay. So my character within a character uh, needs a species. Two of diamonds. And so diamonds means elf or dark elf. If you know me, I'm going dark elf. That's just what's happening. Yup. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next is class. Three of hearts. Lots of low numbers, but that doesn't matter because we're just going off uh, face cards and suits. So we're hearts. That makes me a rogue also on brands. <laughs> Seven of diamonds. Remarkably strong. Okay. Uh, so dark elf. Rogue, remarkably strong. Yes, this feels right. And then my real life identity, because I'm playing a character playing a character, of course. A 10 of hearts. Well, that makes me a powerful executive. Mm. So uh, I feel very comfortable with this. Okay, so I need to name my, my character's character, yes? Mm -hmm. Sure, yes. Okay, this... Dark Elf, her name will be Yora uh, Pinterbell. How about that? 
I don't know what it means. It's not as strong as Stonebane. I don't know what that means either, but I'm I'm very strong. Although apparently you're very strong too. Oh, it's, true. Now I'm worried. I'm going to get embarrassed here. Yes. My strength comes from within. <laughs> All right, Damien. Let's All find right. out who you're playing. Let's go species. Jack, oh, wait, wait. I didn't mention oh. I'm using uh, payday playing cards. All right. Those who know me would, would know how significant that is. Still have my deck. Uh, no of me. No, I mean, no me, no of me. I'm doing what I do. <laughs> Jack of Spades. So Jack of Spades is, uh, we're going with Jack over Spades, so that makes me a cat folk. Okay. Ooh. That cat folk works. Now let's go for class. Oh, King of Spades. A lot of spades here. Uh, we're going to go with King over spades. That makes me a scout. Cat folk scout. That works. Okay. Sneaky scout. Scout. And then, okay. Let's go with a quirk. What do we have for quirks here? Ten of diamonds. So we're going diamonds. That makes me... Wait. That's Mark. not diamonds. That's hearts. Hearts. So that makes me <laughs> competitive. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is a heart. They are correct. My bad. <laughs> okay, and now uh, last but not least, oh, okay, that's a diamond. Nine of diamonds. And that makes me athlete or military background. I'm going to go, probably go athlete. As most cat folks are. Yeah, he's cat folks, he's athlete. Okay. What, what kind of athlete are you? Oh, oh, that's a good point. Can't just be a and are you player. are you like a famous athlete who's like sort of hiding out playing the game, or are you just like you know uh, aspiring? I'd say he's like let's let's go with like a uh, decathlon kind okay. of like a very you know does much stuff, and then he's he's relatively well known, you know, not quite Olympic class, but nationally. All right. So if you if you know about that sort of thing, you'd know. But if you don't, he's yeah. If you know, know, you know. Yeah, if you if you know, you know. <laughs> so two questions uh we want to sort of answer from here are now we figured out oh wait, I'm sorry, I jumped I jumped the gun. Uh tell us more about your cat folk, Damien. Yeah, so uh I need a name. Um good thing about having a bookshelf, plenty of names. I'm gonna go with Montaro. <laughs> <laughs> good of- name. Names here, yeah. But let me go single name too. Cats, cats don't. I don't feel like cats need both names. So we'll go Montaro, and uh, yeah, Montaro. Yeah, decathlon, decathlete, cat folk, scout. So he's gonna be using the sneaky, competitive. What kind of what kind Did of cat say- folk are you? Is there like a, a breed comparison here? You know, Russian blue. Tabby. I want to be like a, a like a like a snow leopard or something. Yeah, like a, like a leopard. Uh, well, snow leopard. Yeah, snow leopard. Okay, that's the, cool. The gray, the gray and the white ones? All right. Yeah, let's be a snow leopard. You don't often see snow leopard cat folk. Yeah, so you do decat the lawn specifically. Uh, Is that right? You, yeah, I, yeah. I see what you did there. I see yeah. what you did. Okay, uh-huh. so my last question on Montaro is you're competitive. Mm. Now, is it that Montaro is competitive or is it just that as a professional athlete, you are competitive and that just comes out? Uh, in the character as well. I, I think it, there's a blend because cats, by their very nature, have a very individualistic streak of I'm going to do it my way and I want to be where I want to be when I want to be. So that's kind of a, that can be competitive E. And of course, if he's a decathlete, and especially one who's ranked but not, you know, in the Olympics, on the Olympic level, then he's definitely very competitive and wants to. So one feeds the other, I'd imagine. I think that makes sense. Yeah, we're all a manifestation of our characters or vice mm-hmm. versa. Right. Take that, reverse it. <laughs> so the next question is, uh, again, we now have our three characters who are the protagonists of our story, but one of the questions is how we all come to be together uh, as, as characters. And a part of the question is whether any of us know one another in our real lives. Did we sort of get into this together or are we just thrown together in the virtual world and have to get to know each other as we go. Uh, so we have a powerful executive. What what is like your company? You know, uh, 
Yora? Helion Enterprises, uh, we do a lot of techno, uh, uh, a lot of research in creating systems that are dynamic in the fields. You know, we're in a lot of right. different areas, organizationally. So, so do you think you might know either a, uh, a popular decathlete or a aspiring actor? Oh, well, uh, I was going to say the decathlete is our spokesperson. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Uh, I, uh, speaking as a struggling actor, I'm going to say maybe you work in the mail room. <laughs> that, that makes some sense. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, or I'm, or I could also see like, I'm a friend of yours who's trying to get you to like, put me in an advertisement or something. And you're, yeah, we'll talk about to... it. We'll talk about it. Yeah. I, it's possible. Um, okay. But if, if you could play this game. You would see sort of what an amazing actor I am. So, like, like, just give it a try. It'll be fun. Maybe you want to do a sponsorship here or something like that. It could be good for the brand. The Helion sponsorships are nice. I can I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah, we're really trying to uh, reframe our our public image after a few scandals this year. So that's that's why we've really brought on. Um, of course, a high, a highly regarded public figure, uh, such as Montaro. I'm get, uh, we have our names, we have the character names, and then we have the character character names. <laughs> we can just stick with with our character names for now. So yes, Montaro. And yeah. and I gotta say, Montaro, I'm a big fan. I'm I'm kind of trying not to make a big deal about it, but you know, this is pretty exciting. You follow the Catholics? Wow. <laughs> uh, okay. So we know a little about ourselves. We know a little bit about what's, what's bringing us all here. And so the next thing we want to do is to determine where we call home. Every group of adventurers needs some place that is the, the hub for their adventures. Uh, in the novels, uh, Marcus, who is known as Lyrian Raisler in the game, begins in the village of Aldford, which is a farming community threatened by goblins that lies near an ancient Nefarian ruin. Uh, so for us, we have a table with a book that will help us randomly determine some basic details about where we're beginning in the world of Ascend Online. So I'm going to draw the first card, and we have a three of diamonds, which is we also are in a farmstead. So, you know, nice rural out in the country. Uh, Yora, if you don't mind, if you would draw the next two cards. Okay. Double down. King! Uh, we are at war with. So we're at war with something. What are we at war with? Ooh. Oh, two face cards in a row. That's exciting. Nice. We're at war with the undead. <laughs> Pretty the epic. Oh, undead. Okay. You know, I like a clear enemy. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. In the gray area. Um, anti-undead. And, and Montaro, tell us the complication about this already very simple situation. Well, it would be simple if not for the... Ooh, wow, face cards all over. Struggling with the internal conflicts of how we want to deal with all these... Right. well... So, so I will just say, you know, now the next step is we have these basic details. We know that we are in a farmstead uh, that is at war with undead, but is also torn apart by internal conflict uh, when we come to it. I'll just throw out just a random thing that occurs to me is if there's this struggle, because the undead, of course, are people who were once part of the town like it's like basically you're at war with your great grandfathers oh wow awkward okay and, I and see so, how this could be debatable you know one almost wonders like is it war like they're just attacking us or is it like they're very critical of of the way the the current generation <laughs> are managing the farm wow. um anyhow we need a name does anyone have a good name for our farmstead um, Montara, grab a book. Oh, no, right? <laughs> what was that? Uh, what was that, Vega? Uh, Huskerton. 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 I like it. <laughs> uh, so here we are in the charming farming community of Huskerton. 
So I guess we're corn farmers? Yes. It seems like (laughs) it. Uh, And we're at war with undead. And so, again, just off the the surface, like, how bad do you think that is? Are we actually uh, being sort of raided by zombies or skeletons? Do you think it's just like, oh, there's ghosts howling at the night and nobody can get any sleep? Uh, Do you think this is... It's it's a long term threat, you know. But do we think it's it's uh, it's again a sort of physical mortal threat, or is it more that oh, it's constantly wearing us down, having the howling banshees every night? What if they're just so easy to kill, but mm-hmm. they're they're never ending? I mean, once just you keep come coming. undead and reanimate, you really have a thirst for flesh or a hunger I, a hunger for flesh. Good old zombies. I like it. Mm-hmm. Now here's my here's my observation: uh, an ogre, dark elf, and a cat folk, mm-hmm. unusual individuals to be collected in a farmstead. Are we natives or were we hired to deal with the problem? Mm. Well, we're adventurers, of course. Right. So the point is, we've appeared in the world, mm-hmm. and we're here as adventurers to find adventure. And so, so we so we came to the. Yeah, so we just we just signed and logged in yesterday, right. and we found ourselves by the village of Huskerton, okay, where cool. the good NPC people mm-hmm. have been uh, plagued by the ravenous but very weak undead, which is good for us because they're really easy to kill to get basic experience. Like this is it's, it's a grinding situation. But you know, you go out in the morning, you kill twenty undead, but they're going to be back in an hour. Mm-hmm. Um. So, so that all makes uh, makes sense there, and and likewise, that's the the struggling with internal conflicts is a complication of Huskerton, not necessarily of us. So that's the question: is what is the when we come to Huskerton, what do we discover? What is this this uh, conflict that's tearing the town apart? Is it too real to say um, pro undead propaganda? being spread by a small group. <laughs> I, I, I think that makes perfect sense. You know, there, there is a group who, I mean, I could even see a case being made that there's, there's a priest or someone who actually says, you know, we'd all be better off undead if we just let them eat all our brains. Maybe being a zombie is the best way to go. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. most people aren't accepting that. Right. And, but he's good. got a small I but there are. <laughs> he's got a small he's but loyal fighting. cadre that uh, that are that are attempting to and maybe people are starting to disappear. Yeah, I think that's good. And, and becoming Everyone. zombies and we're not sure whether they decided to become zombies or whether they were you know, a part don't, of the process of zombifying the town. Don't think of it as undeath. Think of it as life 2.0. <laughs> but okay. So what we now know is we have our three adventurers. We have come to the town of Huskerton, the uh, farmstead plagued by weak but persistent undead, but the town itself is divided as to whether they should be fighting them or whether perhaps being undead is, is you know, the way to go. Um, and so our next question is that's our starting location. That's where we've found ourselves. But also beyond that, we have a main quest that is essentially every day we'll be dealing with some immediate challenge, something that we discover. But what is the story? If this is a novel, what is the arc? What is the major thing we're going to deal with? And so I am going to uh, draw a a card. And my card is a queen. Uh, So we apparently need to negotiate peace. And uh, Montara, why don't you draw our second card? Okay, we have to negotiate peace with... Uh, That's a jack, is that correct? Yes. Uh, While Uh, restoring a corrupted shrine. uh Huh. Well, that that kind of... Wow, that's a pretty tight... (laughs) Corrupted shrine, undead, negotiate peace. (laughs) I I think this this does seem like it really totally totally makes sense. Presumably, the corrupted shrine is the source of the undead. Mm Mm-hmm. And maybe negotiating peace, it could be that it's with the undead, like, you know, or something like that. Or it could just mean we've got to resolve this this problem in the village, that the village is torn apart by these internal disputes, and we've got to, to unify. Perhaps the longer, the, uh, the, the undead that have been around longer that have 
brains have become more sentient. I think that makes sense. One, which is one of the reasons why they are trying to, the, the group is saying we should become undead because then all we have to do is eat enough brains, we'll become sentient and we can continue on with our second lives. Immortally. Mm -hmm. If there's a priest or a, you know, chief farmer or someone mm -hmm. uh, who um, is, is sort of behind the pro-undead movement, uh, it could be that maybe they actually are undead and we don't know yet, right. you know, because yeah. they're a smart undead, you know. But, so but, all, but all of these are things that, you know, we can see how it goes uh, as we go through it. But the basic mm -hmm. point is we know our basic story now. We're in Huskerton, plagued by undead, divided among the people, and somehow we're going to have to try and cleanse a corrupted shrine and restore peace to Huskerton. Are you ready for this? I'm yes. always ready with my remarkable strength. <laughs> I'm um, interested to see who comes I'm, out. You know, I'm, I'm also very strong. I am an ogre. I'm just saying I... You know, just saying. There's a lot of strength. A lot. But of can you do this? Hold on. Will I get it? Will I get it? Oh, no, hold on. I could do it. Oh, never mind. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so how the game works is that we play in turns. Uh, normally, you would play ten turns because it is the uh, part of the story of Ascend Online that you spend ten days in the game and then you have to take time off. And so each turn is a day. We're just going to play five turns just to get a feel for it. So we've got five days to try and cleanse a corrupted shrine and bring peace to Huskerton. Um, and to do that, we're going to have to face a challenge each day. Okay. And so there's a table for that. So mm -hmm. let's get started. And we're going to take turns drawing cards. So I'll draw the first card, which will determine the basic challenge. and. Uh, something I should say is each turn you have an active player who is essentially the main character of this particular day. So this is a day that Grogar is taking center stage. And we know that the challenge he's going to face is a 10, and it is diplomatic negotiation. Um, Kira, will you see what we're negotiating with? Certainly. It seems to be... The locals. The locals. So, uh, again, frankly, we couldn't have uh, wow. planned, uh, planned that better. Uh, Montara, what is the possible reward? If we successfully situation? negotiate with the locals, we will find ourselves for uh, new spells or a spell book. Okay. Okay. That, that priest probably has, has something around. Mm -hmm. uh, and do any of us cast spells? No. Oh, yeah, I cast spells. I'm a priest. Oh, okay. yeah, you're a priest. Yeah, you, you, you uh, cast spells. And if we fail, however, we are going to have to deal with, uh, ooh, an alliance is lost. Ooh. So I'm going to throw out this again at this point. We've determined the elements. Now, the first thing is for us to agree as a group what we're dealing with here. Frankly, this seems relatively straightforward based on what we already know. We knew the locals were having trouble. Uh, so I think this is a matter of the three of us have arrived in Huskerton and they're, they're in the midst of, you know, a, uh, a big sort of uprising. You know, the, the pro-undead priest is maybe there's like a protest or something going on. And we've got to try and, and settle this. I'm now thinking that maybe since the reward, if we succeed, is magic, maybe the, uh, the, the, it should be there is a priest in the village who is anti-undead. And um, uh, so, so who's, who's behind the, the undead? You know, who's the pro-undead force in town? Who do you think? So, so is the... Is the uh... The priest, the source of the undead, or is it the head farmer who's who's pro undead? I think it's the head farmer. I think that the priest mm -hmm. is actually a nice person who would like to solve this situation. Wait, wait, but yes. we have a corrupted shrine. So would mm -hmm. that should we switch that? We have a corrupted shrine though. 
What so it's a, I'm saying, I think the priest would like the priest knows about the corrupted shrine yeah. and would like to uncorrupt it. You know, this is sort of how they they're the ones who are going to tell us, oh, I was driven out of the shrine and something's wrong there. But we know that that they could teach me a useful spell if we manage to get them on our side. Right. right. Uh, so, Becca, who do you think the the pro undead person is here? Oh, yeah. He's leading a group of farmers. He he has been a farmer for for many generations. His name is Wimple. Oh, Wimple. Wimple Winstead. Wimple Winstead. Uh, Wimple Winstead. Mm -hmm. All right. And he's very old. Yeah. Yeah. He's pretty old. Uh, uh, bearded, uh, burly, big guy. Wimple Winstead. Don't mess with him. I think so. So, uh, Damien, do you have a thought about our, our priest or priestess? Uh, our, our, um, our priestess mm -hmm. is... Uh, uh, her name is Yanev. Okay. And she actually joined the priesthood after she turned down with for marriage. Okay. So he's got a little bit of a, a you know, he, he's not really happy with her. And perhaps he's trying to figure out, you know, his, uh, the shrine was corrupted when he was trying to find some way to ingratiate himself with either the God or some, some power that would enable him to win her hand. She just wants to be a priest. She always wanted to be a priestess. He he was, you know, he's like, you should give up this idea as a priesthood and, you know, come be a proper farm wife. And she's like, no, I want to serve the town and, you know, be larger than your little man ideas. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that, uh, that this is our first day. We are arriving at Huskerton and coming upon a, uh, a crazed you know, crowds of uh, led by Wimple, who are are clashing uh, in the town square with with Yanev, and and demanding you know the the right to to be undead. Right. And I am a very charismatic ogre, and you know, to me, this is this is an opportunity to to make a big speech, uh, to just start right off highlighting my amazing acting skills and so i'm gonna try and come in and basically uh i think i'm just trying to sort of strengthen yanev's position and and sort of forge a, a strong alliance uh with with her right away and because you know these other guys seem creepy do you think uh, is there a particular way you think that either of you would try and back me up on that? Uh, just just extolling the fact that the the shrine has been, if it's a corrupted shrine, then it's not serving its natural purpose, its its, it's intended purpose. Mm -hmm. So whereas there may be some perceivably you know beneficial aspects to becoming undead, uh, mm -hmm. you know it, it seems that it would be better if it was. If you remained alive and were able to advance and conquer challenges because as an undead, you know, what's, what's the evolutionary? How do you evolve as an undead versus how do you evolve as a person? You know, your offspring become people you eat as opposed to people you've born. <laughs> so, so Montaro is offering a logical argument to back up Grogar's uh, speech. Uh, Yora, are you doing yeah. anything in particular? You, so you're negotiating with Yanev, right? Our priestess. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm, I, I, as I said, I'm trying to get us to have a strong alliance with Yanev, sort of early on. You yeah, know, I think. I mm -hmm. think the easy pitfall is that Yanev is extremely independent, as we already mm -hmm. know, and assuming that we could give her something that she doesn't already have may be uh, our downfall and what could anger her. So I think. Um, Offering our services in whatever way she wishes, uh, obsequiously, and we want to provide her alliance, but we do not want to dictate how she should uh, confront Winstead. That makes perfect sense. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've come up with our plan, and uh, and we know essentially what the story of the day is: is us showing up and. Um, you know, trying to to make this pitch to forge a connection with uh, with Yanev, and so now we need to find out if it succeeds. 
And so the way we do that is the active player and the player to their left, so that's going to be you, Becca, both draw cards. My card determines our success, and Becca determines the difficulty. So I have a queen. Aces are high. Uh, and Becca, what do you have? This is a pretty good start. Okay, oh. and you only have a four. So because of that, that means we did succeed. We've obtained our reward. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it seems likely to me that we have formed an alliance with Yanev, mm -hmm. uh, which probably also means this would be where we learn more about the Corrupted Shrine. Because, you know, we're new in town, but she's right. going to tell us about the Corrupted Shrine. And I've gained some sort of spell here. So I think maybe like some kind of holy light that she's teaching me that's what she's been using to fight the undead. Nice. Um, bad action going on. We like it. And, and I don't know. I, I at least hope that, that I got a point of speechcraft, you know, building up there for, for making the, the big speech. And perhaps you too as well, Monto. Any, uh, so, you know, now reflecting on that, any, uh, anything else that you sort of feel in that initial day that, that one of you would, would sort of bring to the story. I feel like we've made, we've made strong progress in, in settling into Huskerton and forming ties with the locals. We did. I think we did. Yes. Good. Well, I would check with Yanev for a place to stay. Hmm. That makes sense. Uh, I think maybe she let us stay in the, the temple for now. Like it, it would just be small, you know, sort of bare, bare is option, it, but it would be a place to start for us. Does that seem to the, make sense? Is okay. the temple available with the corrupted shrine, or is the corrupted shrine in the temple, or is it somewhere else? Oh, I think the shrine is out in the. I think the shrine should be further away from town because I think so it's, not her, it's not her. Shrine, it's not her shrine. Yeah. Well, I think she might have been there before. Right. But I, I feel like the shrine is deep in a forest. forest. Yeah. yeah. All right. Like, mm hmm. Okay. So that's the end of our first turn. Uh, we have managed to, to forge an alliance, and we succeeded. Moving on to day two, and I've been talking a lot, in part because I've been the active player. But now, Yora, this is your day. Uh, so let's find out uh, what is going on, and then we can take it from there. So what's the challenge Absolutely. that Yora is going to face today? on day two of our adventure our challenge is the enemy attacks oh, an undead course. attack uh, definitely will thwart our plans they must have heard what we were planning and of our alliance and should we popcorn around again and maybe montaro could tell me the force we're up against yeah montaro what are we dealing with i guess i shouldn't the, assume uh, the our plan has angered the a Goddard Servants. Oh. Interesting. Well. Okay. So oh. apparently he... has bigger allies than we anticipated. Well, <laughs> or, yeah, maybe maybe the god is the god behind behind all of this. But just to finish our, our things before we uh we may jump to conclusions, the possible reward oh, yes. if we can resolve this situation, we could get pure ether, Ooh. magical energy. Because, you know, we're dealing with gods. You know, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's the consequence of failure, Yora? That's going to be our reputation. Oh. Yeah. You're I mean, right. yes, our flesh might be eaten, but more importantly, our reputation could be stained. You know, lose some streamers, viewers. Are going oh. to... <laughs> it, it is a point, because we are in Ascend Online, so we can get killed by undead, and that will be okay. We'll come back. But, you know, if, if we will... look stupid doing it, it's yeah, not good. Will... Especially since these are simple and dead that are easily killed. All right, so Jordan, yeah. tell us more about how you see this, this situation. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we wake up in the temple, and we are uh, about to leave when we're awoken prematurely as uh, Yanev's assistant rushes in, wakes us, and shows us just outside the stained glass windows. There are many servants of the dead, but there 
is one of them that is the representative of the God that has reawakened these beings. Oh, of course, that's Wimple himself. He does show by peeling back his flesh and showing no pain. He tries to tempt us uh, and explains that, what, what's this God? Uh, what's this God that reanimates corpses and he is in service to? Oh, I mean, it could be something like the sleeper or uh, trying to think of something that has a positive spin, even though there's a death, death aspect, you know, the immortal queen or something. The transcendent. Transcendent. Yes, the transcendent. Yeah. Uh, who wishes to bestow her gift upon humanity in return for favor. And the only gift she has to give is the reawakening of the dead. Uh, basically stopping them from passing on to, to the underworld now, successfully. Basically, she's put up a roadblock. Now we're at war here, so so I have to say, is this is this a war of words, or is this we're going to have to fight our way out of the temple? To no, with? they they say that uh, either we have to come out and allow ourselves to be turned into undead, or they're coming in there to get us, and so we have to fight our way out. Because because we need some XP, is all I'm saying. Yeah, I'll go with that. So yeah, absolutely. I think that as as a an elf rogue. Uh, I think I would have a ranged bow and arrow weapon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crossbow? You know the dark elves are fun. Ooh, crossbow. <laughs> yeah, let's do crossbow. And are you trying to go for Wimple himself, or are you just trying to clear a path? Uh, I'm going to go for Wimple because it seems like he is controlling a large portion. Uh, it's almost like a vampire. Whoever you turn... Right, right. Is is um is killed for good, is dead dead if uh if you take out their creator. There you go. I I think that, that Grogar is totally just using this holy light spell that he learned to just try and sort of clear a path, keep them away from you. So Yeah, you know, I think we need is... to bring Yanev with us as well. Right. We've gotta keep her safe. Right. And so I'll I'll work on keeping Yanev safe and just trying to sort of hold them at bay a little. Montaro, what are you you doing to help you? Montaro is using a and a short sword. Because he's a cat folk, he dual wields. And he is uh he's trying to use the flat of the weapons because he knows these town folks, not sure if they could be recovered afterwards. So removing too many limbs would mean they wouldn't be able to farm. So he's trying not to cause that kind of issue. But, you know, if, if, if worse comes to worse, they'll figure it out. <laughs> There's magics to return such things to, uh, to their original placement. All right. We can hope that perhaps if Yora manages to take down uh, Wimple, that, that they'll be restored. Mm. So now we discover uh, Yora, you draw for success. Montaro, you draw the difficulty. Uh oh. Okay. What do you got? Wait, I got to show first. Oh, <gasps> ace. ace. That ace. worked out. Do I even need to draw? Hi. So, Montara, what did you get? Two. Woo. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> so, so tell us what it looks like. Apparently, that was a great success. Uh, Yora, what? Yeah. Happened? Uh, I imagine Montaro goes out the doors first, slashing and hacking. Look, they're. These are undead. We don't need to be gentle. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going straight for between the eyes. It seems that a large group of them are surrounding Wimple and Grogar. You're casting holy light as they fall backwards uh, each time you cast this orb of the spell. And uh, we get closer and closer to Wimple. Grogar, you're just continuing to get Yanev out safely so we can uh, get her to a place of hiding and maybe closer to the woods so we can start getting towards that corrupted shrine. Uh, but Montaro and I hack and slash and uh, shoot with our my crossbow to get closer and closer and Wimple get, gets, gets wompled? Wompled. Yeah, we wompled him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so if you go right between the eyes, he is, of course, weird and undead. Is it? Is it? Do you actually destroy him or is it like you, you put an arrow through his head and he crumples but then he gets back up? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I, I got him through the neck. So now he just has a crossbow arrow sticking out of his neck. He just leaves it there. But mm -hmm. uh, it does, it does um, distract many of 
of these people and or these undead and we knock out i'd say about half their number with an ace versus a two oh, and absolutely. um where's the wimple's still there just incapacitated for now and of course he has a he has an inability to make a convincing argument possible <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yes he can't recruit anymore so in doing this you obtain some some pure ether where does it come from <sighs> does it uh, flow out of wimple Oh, excellent. Yes, definitely. So it's it, like it flows he's bleeding magical energy. Absolutely. It's his connection to the transcendent one uh, that flows. And I do have more power, um, but I also have a mental connection to the transcendent one now. Oh, so it's like flowed flowed into you and sort of made you are you like glowing blue or something? Oh yeah, definitely glowing. Uh, my feet are touching the ground a little bit less. It's like I exist with less gravity pull. Um, so I'm just like lighter and I can sort of like sprint uh, gazelle-like. And but, but now I have this sort of nagging voice in my head of the transcendent one that I'm just trying to push out and ignore and use the power side. But it is telling me, you know, being undead has be its perks. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, let's take a, a look at the day in our progress. Um, first off, I have to say I also am pretty happy because I built up my conjuration spell, you know, skills a little, casting all that holy light. Um, and yeah, we came into town. We forged an alliance with Yanev, who put us up in the temple, but then the temple was attacked by servants of Wimple on the transcendent. We've now uh, managed to, to seriously wound Wimple, though he's, he's not so easy to destroy as a host of the Transcendent. And um, in addition to that, uh, we did have to sort of flee, flee out of Huskerton, and we're sheltering somewhere nearby. And I think it's going to be up to you, Montaro, as you're taking point on day three to decide <laughs> where we uh, where we are hiding. Okay, so uh, with the, we, now the the town of Huskerton was built in the shadow of a mountain because the the, the rain runoff enables some very very uh, viable soil. What's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, arable. Arable, yeah. Well, arable, close. Mm -hmm. Verdant. Verdant, we'll take verdant Excellent. soil. Fair. And so uh, the, the, to one side is, of course, the Corrupted Shrine in the woods. But if you head towards the mountain, then there's some places of, there's some caves and some other outcroppings where you can easily shelter yourself from advancing forces of undead if they were to try to attack us. So we're kind of up in the, you know, half like outcropping slash caves with, with a lot of, you know, uh, corners and pockets that we can funnel a potential enemy uh, attempt through if they were to attack us. So All right. Really well, let's look at the challenges and figure out what day three brings as we're camping right. out. Challenge is... Area. So, Montaro, uh, so the enemy is building strength. Oof. And uh, what we know is that forces we'll be dealing with today are uh, Agadorit servants. So again, we're Ooh. we're following a pretty logical script here. The transcendent <laughs> is is building its power. Um, Yora, what's our possible reward? Oh, that would be oh well, pure ether. <laughs> we're, we're consistent. I'm about to become know. a magic creature. <laughs> and what's uh what's the threat this time? Uh, the consequence, Montara. If we do not, then ooh. Oh, this a sinister a sinister curse. curse. So it'd be cool. So we're either going to get positive magical energy or negative. I would like that king for the actual <laughs> to okay. fix the problem. So Montaro, mm -hmm. this is your day. We awake, camped out in our, mm -hmm. our little camp. How does this, uh, this play out? So Huskerton is not the only town in this area. And while we were here protecting and, and helping it and fighting Wimple and trying to make things happen, uh, the Transcendent One was recruiting from the next town over. Oh, okay. Which is, yeah, Holesville. And Holesville <laughs> did not do as well as we did. 
and the forces have amassed, and they've come from Holesville. They're right at the foot of the mountain. They're giving us the chance again to join them. They're saying, you're going to join us one way or another. You see that this is inevitable. Why do you fight? Come. Become transcendent with us. I... I like the idea that while Huskerton, we hope, you know, we want to, we want to save Huskerton, like Huskerton, I hope there's our home, but I like the idea that Holville, it's just like, it's gone. Yeah. You know, this is, this is what awaits. No one can stop the, the transcendent. And, uh, and, and so, yes. Um, how's Montaro going to try and deal with this? So, uh, well, we, we attempted to just, you know, to, to, to cut them down yesterday. And it, it, whereas we did obtain that goal, we didn't actually manage to stop the problem. So being that I am a scout, I feel like it's time to take the problem straight to the source mm-hmm. and see if we can get Yanev to the shrine, corrupted shrine, and maybe between the, the, uh, the power she's granted you and the power she has herself, we can cleanse that shrine. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. We need to do rig up a couple of traps so they think and things so they think we're still here and let them, you know, beat themselves against the wall of 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 trying to convince us that we're here while we sneak away and try to actually solve the issue. So our attempt our attempt today is to get away without them seeing us so we can solve the issue. Uh that that sounds good. Montaro's obviously an expert at that. Uh can you think of a way Grogar can help you? Oh yeah, obviously the the priest can uh, can with his, with uh, between the remarkable strength of both <laughs> my fellow uh, party members, we're both quite strong. Yeah, you you guys can set things up that will enable us, you know, move stones and things like that to to help uh, funnel any approach that might be going on. And, and perhaps between yourself and uh, the the priestess, you could find some way to create some magical uh, response. Mm-hmm. when they attempt to speak so that they assume that we're still here, perhaps like a message stone or something of that nature where you, you cast it so that when they speak, there's a response coming. And if we set up the rocks so that they move, they'll see and hear movement so that they'll, they'll think that we're still up there and that they're still trying to negotiate us, but we're being rather stubborn. All right. Sounds good to me. Yeah. I feel yeah. like it, the spell should just um, repeat whatever they ask. So it says, come out of there, come out of there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're undead. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I just also just have to say, Grogar is pretty impressed by how remarkably strong Yora is. <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't see that coming. I can't help it. Something about the powers I've tapped into in the ether just seemed to make me stronger. And she lifts a boulder over her head and says, watch. Wow. Smashes it. Maybe we should have just smashed him. All right. Let's well, see. let's see if this plan succeeds, Montaro. Uh, Ten. Oops, seven. seven. Okay. Yeah. So right. far, so far, we we've had pretty good luck. Yeah. Um. So I mean, since we're planning a five day plan here, and mm-hmm. uh, we do have two goals, do you think this means we succeed? Do we do we cleanse the temple? Because we're still going to have to deal with with bringing peace to the town, even if right. we manage to cleanse the temple. I think, I think, yeah, I think maybe we, well, at least we get, maybe we get away, get to today, get away and get to today and cleanse it tomorrow and then solve the town on okay. the 5th. We hope. Yes. Uh, uh, that, that seems like a good parsing of, uh, of our days and our, 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 yeah. our time. So, so we get to the temple. How does that play out? Like, and, and, and just again, tell me how, tell me this story. What happened? So we approach the temple and we see that the, the transcendent one is actually has some weird interaction with plant life as well for the plants have become twisted mockeries of life and grown all through the temple and the animals that were around there are starting to turn as well the 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 taking of holesville has enabled the transcendent one to push more into this reality and be able to affect even the very stone itself things are starting to become you know very very twisted and and it's it's Saying that they're undead is almost what we're seeing is almost not right. They're they're a different level of life. Like the mm-hmm. life is pushed through the the, the aether has in, has imbued in them to a way that they push through life into something that's different. And their fragile mortal forms are barely able to contain them. 
And one of the things that they need to do is they need to consume life in order to maintain their forms, in order to kind of balance out the energy that's within them versus the, the, uh, the world around them. So that gives us some clues as to how we're going to be able to fix this. Obviously, if we can shut off the valve, if we can shut off the source of energy, we can cleanse the shrine and get the, the transcendent one's energy to stop flowing into the world, that will certainly slow down and perhaps eventually solve the issue of these these transcended. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> transcended. now creatures. You receive a reward of of pure ether yourself. So, yes. are you also like Yora? Are you infused with some of the, the this transcendent power? Yes, this this power comes to me, and uh, just just as as Yora, it, it comes in and it it whispers to me, but. You know, but the transcendent one is the whispers that we hear are are interpreted by us, and my competitive nature leads me to push them into a more uh, platable form for me, which is a a more co- like utilizing it more towards my physical aims and and, and attempting to uh, to fight it off and push it back, as opposed to you know absorb it through and then push it back, use it as a loop as opposed to using its own energy against it. That was a long-winded way to say that. <laughs> well, I think it sounds great. All right. So uh, that brings our, our day three to an end. Uh, mm-hmm. So far, we've been, we've been winning, winning, winning. But on the other hand, we still do need to, um, to actually bring this, bring this to a close. The town is definitely not at peace. And we're at the shrine but it's not yet done. So this brings us back around to Grogar's day. And I got to say, this isn't going well, but I started off making that cool big speech. And then I've just been kind of moving rocks around and and casting light in the background. And I'm not worried that this hasn't really been the big breakthrough moment that, uh, that, that Grogar was hoping for. Uh, But what we know is if we look at the challenges, here we are sort of based around uh, the Corrupted Shrine, and we're going to have to deal with wandering monsters. Ooh. Um, and Yara, what kind of forces are we dealing with here? Oh, uh, let's see. Nope. <laughs> it was the same one, and I'm not doing it. <laughs> it was a rival guild. Oh, Ooh. interesting. All right, let's hold that thought. Um, what's our possible reward here, Montaro? If we are able to overcome this rival guild, we will be the recipient of six more ether. I swear, I I drew a goddard servant and you drew pure ether. That was insane. I did well, I, say I did Grover because it's too much. Only character who hasn't channeled this power. So I mean, it okay. sort of makes sense. We're just all gaining this transcendent power if we we're if all going to become it. transcendent. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we're misunderstanding the transcendent. Maybe the transcendent awesome. isn't so bad. Uh, however, should we fail, we are going to have to deal with something being stolen from us. And I think let's wait to to decide what that is in, until it happens, because I think it will depend how the story plays out. It could be that Yanov would be stolen. Or that was what I was thinking, trying. too. That's the most logical so, one. I'm seeing this as we start off, you know, in the shrine where we've been, this is our plan. We've, we've secured our position here. We just need to build our strength and really cleanse it. Um, but in the morning, Montaro, I, I think, if you're uh, acceptable with this, Montaro would be out scouting. And you would see that probably from Holesville, that it turns out that Holesville actually had some adventurers there as well uh, who have, have actually just embraced the side of the transcendent. I think we get some kind of, you know, uh, blackguard, you know, evil, uh, evil paladin types. Um, and probably like, like an evil rogue too, just so we can get some, some bounce off with with Yora, but maybe like they're like an, an, a high elf. So it's like the sort of snooty high elf who thinks they're a better rogue than you. Uh, 
but basically that they're trying to seize the shrine back from us before we can cleanse it because they want to claim it for the transcendent. Does mm. that seem reasonable? Anyone have thoughts yeah. to add? Uh, yeah, if, they, if they can secure the shrine, and uh, obviously if they succeed, they they uh, you know they they injure our chances to to cleanse the shrine, which means that the transcendent one can expand that much faster. Now, here's a question. These rival adventurers, are they, uh, are they also transcendent? Are they infused with the transcendent energy? Or is Absolutely. that actually something that they haven't done, like that it makes the two of you different from them? Oh, they've been promised to be. But infused. they haven't had it. I no. think they have to claim ours. Yes. Oh, yeah. I like that. That it's yeah, sort they have of to like absorb it from us. stolen this power from the transcendent. That was meant like, for us. You. Yeah, if they kill you, they get it. Mm -hmm. I, like it. I think that's cool. Um, so I think that the Grogar, despite being very strong, he is a priest and he has gained this this power that he's going to try to basically reason with them. And he's going to try and, and talk them down, sort of using the holy light. He's going to try and reveal to them that the transcendent is using you. This isn't real. He's going to make a big speech. But I also think that while he's making that big speech, the enemy adventurers, especially that snooty high elf rogue, you know, are trying to sort of sneak around. Like he's engaging the main force, but they're going to try and sneak around and, and actually... Deal, uh, get into the temple, kill Yanev. So it's going to be sort of up to you two, Yora and Montaro, uh, to stop them. So Yora, what do you think your scene is going to be in this? Uh, well, I am going into uh, a, a different room within the shrine, or uh, perhaps outside it, and channel the power within me from this ether that mm -hmm. I have imbued. And I want to uh, use the mental connection that the transcendent one has with me and push them out and push my way into the dark elves mind Ooh. because well, we're both elf elves. rogues. Right. Hmm? The, the not dark elf, the elf, the high elf. The, yeah. 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 Uh, and push my way into their mind and sort of, um, make them focus on the words you're saying and be impressionable and welcoming to that information. Uh, and, and then they will not be able to uh, ignore you and murder people. I, I think that's time. great. Montara, what's your moment in this? So I am, I am doing my best to merely make sure that Yanav stays free of the, uh, the black guard and the, the, uh, oppo the other opposing adventurers who are attempting to, to get to her. I, I am using the, the transcendent energy to, uh, attempt to utilize the the plant life and things like that, and the, the corrupted areas around, the, using her power to try to push things in their way and shield her from their attempts to gain her and, and kill her and and uh, mess up our potential to cleanse it while she attempts to cleanse it. All right. Well, I I pray that we succeed. I believe that Mythos is with us, and uh. You know, we've got both the spiritual strength and the pure physical strength, and, and we will succeed. And I drew a king again. Nice. Uh, so, Yora, hopefully you're not going to show an ace. Don't say it. No, it's going to be a two. What would you call that? Jack. Okay. So, Jack. <laughs> Jack. So it's a tough battle. And, and, you know, I think this is the thing is, is Grogar is definitely there, uh, making this speech, holy light flowing out of him, sort of holding the undead back. Uh, you're, uh, you know, you're definitely struggling back and forth, controlling this elf, but I think you do get control of him. So what do you do? Uh, so it's a him. Uh, yes, his name is uh, Wiley. Wiley, the high elf. And um, I, I make him, uh, he's, it, he interprets it as pain as he struggles against he controlling his mind. And I twist his head to look at you, Grogar, as you speechify at him. And I peel his eyes back as he tries to look away, but he can't. And uh, his mind goes blank. 
uh, because I don't know quite what I'm doing. He struggles so hard that inside him, some neural connection is just snapped and he's just stuck staring like stone. Um, yeah. So, so since we're on day four, here's what I think uh, happens is that Grogar is actually essentially making this speech to Wimple, who's here leading these other adventurers. And I think that somehow during this speech, Grogar realizes that this is the thing, is this power that you are using isn't the power of the transcendent. It's the power of the shrine that the transcendent has corrupted and been trying to steal and use for its own strength. And I think that in, uh, in making the speech, in uh, getting the help from Yanev, since Montaro was able to protect her, that he's able to just basically reach out and pull that power out of Wimple and just say, this isn't yours, you know, give it back, you can't hold the light. And, and that is where, again, Grogar also gets that gift of, of the pure ether flowing into him and, and amplifying the power of his, uh, his conjuration spells. And, uh, and this is where we've been worried all this time that the two of you might be corrupted. And what we're discovering is, no, this is the pure magic of the shrine, which we're now going to defend and protect. And that that leaves uh, Wimple dramatically weakened. But of course, he still has all these followers. So as of the end of day four, I feel that we have restored the shrine uh, and, and revealed the true face that it is the transcendent shrine, but this being the transcendent is actually, uh, you know, the thief of light or something like that. And, uh, and that, that we've revealed that and, and stolen that power back from Wimple. But this is it, the final day. After this, we're going to have to take some time off and you never know what's going to happen. You log out for a day, all kinds of trouble. So we really want to try and, and get Huskerton back under control before, uh, before that happens. So Yora... Let's start day five. It's all on me, huh? Okay. All right, our challenge in day five of our adventure. Allies need help. Ooh, all right. Montaro. All right, what is the force against them? And the allies are being attacked by... Nine? Overs? Uh, Overs oh, and come on. Oh. Wow. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, if you manage to succeed, the reward will be uh, new spells or spellbook. I mean, again, we're very consistent. This yeah. whole adventure <laughs> is about spells and ether. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the consequence, though? Yeah. Oh, me. <gasps> the queen says an alliance is an lost. Alliance is lost. <laughs> We need to check our decks here, I think. Yeah. <laughs> They're in sync with one another. That's the problem. Might be okay, so it's your day. Uh, tell, us, tell us what you think of this situation. Okay, so we have found that it's all about channeling the power of the shrine. And we have tapped into that power. We did cleanse it, right? It's our shrine yeah. now. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have the power of the shrine behind the three of us. Now all three of us have this glowing blue light around us and we are walking with the power of the holy light and the shrine and we go back to town and okay. we reinstate Yanev in her temple and uh, it is the townsfolk that come pouring in, the ones that have not been corrupted by the undead, the ones that were hiding in their huts and trying to stay alive and they all come to the temple and they all pledge their fealty to our cause, but they need our help to lead them. And so we must come up against, oh gosh, who was it? Oh, the oh, orgs and the giants. Ogres and giants. Well, and and they giants. say, I think yeah. I think it should be ogres because I think that creates more dramatic tension for Grogar. Yes, if yes, it's it's, it's, so, it's 
ogres. And you know what? The townspeople, after we imbued the light from the temple, they the the undead within the town just went back to their huts and they were like, Look, honey, I'm dead. But maybe we could just, you know, keep farming our land and it can be cool. And I'm over Whip Wimple, um, no longer mm -hmm. pledging my allegiance to him. I just want to keep the town safe. And so they're all coming to the Temple of Yanev and asking us, can they? Can we help against this other outside threat that saw the weakness in the infighting and said, now's the time where we can get ourselves some farms because ogres eat a lot. Yeah, Their I, intention may just be to to take these farms for themselves and work the land so that they can feed their enormous mass. I, I do think that that definitely, it has that sort of element of we come in, we, we've cleansed the temple, Wimple has been defeated, the undead are like friendly now, and that it feels like this is just a great triumph when suddenly like this wave of ogres comes in smack, and we're like, oh yeah. And they're, they're like, oh yeah. Didn't we mention the ogres? <laughs> you know, the huge <laughs> tribes yeah. of ogres that live nearby. And we're, oh. ogres. Yeah. Now that, now that we're, you know, half of us are undead and things like that, we're probably coming um, to uh, take our food and so, or. Swim the town. So <laughs> what's yours plan? How are you going to, how are you going to deal with these, these rampaging ogres, which could just be stab them all a lot, but, but do you have a, do you have a, a, a scheme? Oh gosh. Well, this is a hard part. Uh, I really am sensitive to my friend, the ogre, Grogar. And... I, I, you know, I mean, I, I can't speak for all ogres. I'm just saying. Okay. You right. Know, there's some bad apples out there. No, I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like there's some sort of compromise. Perhaps we can find a way to work with these ogres. Um, and they they must have come from somewhere. They must have been driven out of some other land to want to take ours. So uh, I want to um, use the power of my light to uh, communicate to them all that it's time for a negotiation. They should lay down their weapons outside the temple. You're remarkably strong. Could you like have a have a test of strength Ooh. with a champion of the ogres? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, see, like, we're doing it in the town square, like, in the middle. Right. And, and I love the idea that 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 basically you'd propose something like that, and and they'd think that it was going to be Grogar, and they'd be like, "No, not him." And you'd be like, "No, me." And you know, yes. they're sure that they can best you in a test of strength. Yeah, and for the town, for the town itself, mm -hmm. uh, we need one champion for the ogres to to battle me. All yeah. right. And is it the biggest ogre, or is it is it also not a you know is there a surprise here? Mm, I think it's got to be the biggest ogre. Yeah, so, go for classics. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, tell us about the ogre, Montaro. So th this ogre is he's uh, he's actually half giant. He's oh. not even ogre. So he is he is huge. He is grizzly. He's incredibly strong. And uh, he just knows he's going to absolutely just decimate this tiny little dark elf that dares to challenge the strength of a, of, of a clan of ogres. Oh, he's coming in for you. So he struts out, looks looks down at you and goes, this, this is what you want me to face. <laughs> but he does not know what we know. Right. So as I step in to battle with him, uh, I am going to reverse the way that I used this energy before. And instead of making myself light on my feet, I'm going to essentially increase the gravity on myself so that if he tries to pick up, pick me up and throw me, I will be too heavy for him to lift. Just complete density. And okay. use that to smash his ankles and knees <laughs> until he's on the ground. and. Uh, and then make him say uncle. There you go. All right, for the village, Yora versus Montaro. Let's see some cards. It's an eight. It's an eight. It's eight. not great, Montaro. Six. <sighs> oh, I okay. thought it was a nine. <laughs> what, what happens, Yora? 
he, you know, he is able to throw me. I, I'm not focusing hard enough. I, I just walked out of that t- that shrine thinking, oh, I've got this. But it's all about the mental focus and the preparation. And I, I go inward and I reach out to the two of you and I say, friends, I'm going to need your strength. And uh, I need you to send me your mental energy so that I can harness it all in order to uh, imbue my body with ultimate strength. Smash him across the knees. Uh, Actually, you know what? I don't want to break his knees. I'm going to go behind his knees so he falls to the ground. uh, And then I I, uh, hold the crossbow to his neck. And I say, say uncle. Say ogre. (laughs) <laughs> I, I like the idea that it's about this ether has given us this sort of party connection. So it's like this strength that we can share through the party that you've just discovered. Uh, and, and so we're lending you that ether energy. And uh, Montaro, you were the ogre before. So yeah. how did he respond? So, you know, the, the toss works and she lands and she comes and she smashes in the back of the legs and puts the, uh, the crossbow to my head and, 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 and says, uh, you know, Say, Ogre, you are no ordinary dark elf, and this is no ordinary town. An alliance would be our best idea. Ogre. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So I think that looking to our actual reward of of new spell, that we can uh, basically say the point is it's not a spell like a wizard would have, but you've learned how to manipulate this ether energy in a new way. So that's a cool power up for your character but also it seems like we have managed to secure uh an alliance for for huskerton do you think montaro that the the ogres are agreeing to to you know what's the relationship going to be with the town are they protecting the town or are they just going to keep their distance i I think they're going to the ogres would, would offer an alliance of of protection in cases of uh of any kind of other incursion, <laughs> obviously being on the edge that as Huskerton is, it, you know, with the with the undead coming or the the, the transcend dead coming, you know, there's there's risk of other groups attempting to come and take the power. Uh, mm-hmm. They probably want a little bit of the power themselves, and also the food because they're ogres. Yeah, that makes <laughs> so sense. perhaps some kind of uh, you know exchange of protection and maybe even a little physical labor for subsidence mm-hmm. might also so, be. Yora, it is your day. How how does this wrap up? What's the final? How's Yora bring the scene to a close? Uh, as I before I let the strength that I have borrowed flow back to my companions, which sort of it's sort of like a water flowing that only we can see. And before it flows out of me, I help the ogre to his feet, hmm. and then uh, I yell to the town, "Now we feast!" And we feast with ogres, ogres and townsfolk alike. Nice. And that is, that is how the day comes to a close with us laughing and uh, sharing our power with one another in, in by way of games. We're um, uh, playfully um, testing one another's power and strength. And, and you see this, uh, it all seems to be in like a blue watery substance that is in the air that we're, we're sort of like, um, you know, sending, sending a panther at uh, an ogre and they, they swat it away using a, a blue mind sword that they mm-hmm. are creating as we're teaching them and sharing this power with them. Nice. I think Groger also is definitely keen to learn some cooking skills. Like, so he's <laughs> excited that there's a feast because frankly, all five days he's wanted to work on, on cooking. Uh, and, and so I'm very excited that we're actually having a feast. And so he's helping, uh, helping in the kitchen and, and trying to learn how to use this ether energy to, to help with cooking. Uh, Montaro, what's your final, final moment? Uh, Montaro decides, uh, you know, the, 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 re- the revelation, re- re- rebels, called rebels, rebels are awesome, but danger ever threatens. So he will take some part in the Revels, but he's also going to go out to the see what it is that might be coming for the town of Huskerton that maybe drove the ogres, that maybe caused the shrine to be corrupted. You never know. So as much as he enjoys a good celebration as others, one must stay watch. always looks to the horizon. Mm. All right. 
Well, that is the end of our tale. Tomorrow morning, we will be returning to our jobs. Uh, I, I'm hoping that someone will have been impressed with, with the streaming. Maybe I've got an offer or two. Um, you know, any thoughts about, about what will happen when you go back to work tomorrow? Keith, you know what? Uh, your performance as Grogar was stunning. And I think Helion could really be helped with this idea of an advertisement where uh, a, an ogre is able to cook. I feel like that's that's a whole rebranding we've really been looking for. And so uh, I think we can have two campaigns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so so it's the happiest of endings for for my aspiring actor. And I do, I hadn't thought about the, the ogre cooking being like, yeah, I can see that campaign. Montaro? Uh, well, just spending time, you know, in the skin and then the, the, the abilities of a cat person has just kind of led me to a different way of thinking. You know, and it's, it's kind of some, some, maybe some differences in, in training, perhaps more flexibility, perhaps more, you know, just uh, explosive like training more plyometric training to to alter the way i've been going about things could really help me be a better decathlon and a better spokesperson and perhaps get me over towards making that olympic goal i have had since Excellent. i started so that's the end of our story and again what we now know is we have established a strong connection with the town of huskerton which we have helped uh, you know, which still has this unusual undead population, but we have now managed to, to form an alliance between the living, the dead, and the ogres. Uh, but again, who knows when we log back in, uh, what we will find, and what new forces could be coming trying to steal the power of the Transcendent Shrine. Uh, but that is all for the next adventure. Um, so thank you very much for... Uh, being part of this and to all of you who have been watching it. And uh, if uh, Becca, Damien, would you like to uh, say a little more about how people can find you, Becca? Sure. I'm Becca Scott. You can find me on my YouTube channel, which is called Good Time Society. We do all kinds of RPG content as well as board game tutorials. And I'm on all of the social media platforms as the Becca Scott. Yes. Damien? I'm Damien Poitier. I'm also on all the social media uh, platforms as Damien Poitier. And you can find me uh, flitting across your television screen, mm -hmm. <laughs> usually in, 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 in strange and unusual places. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm Keith Baker. I'm uh, with the company Together Studios, which not only made this game, but also have the Adventure Zone Bureau of Balance uh, coming out soon. And you can find out more at togetherstudio.com. Thanks so much for being a part of this. And you can find both this game, but more importantly, Glory to the Brave, the latest book in the Ascend Online series at audible.com.